Good evening, everyone. I'm seeing people join. We'll get started in just a minute. We'll just give it a couple of seconds for folks to sign on. I'm going to grab a drink and come back. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. We'll get started in just a minute. We're just letting some folks sign on before we get started. I'm back. Great. And I think that will be our cue to get started. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Sasha Perotti. Uh, I'm oh, do, do I start interpreting now? Yes, Gigi. Okay. Uh, we yeah. have an interpreter joining us tonight, and Gigi will be interpreting consecutively for the next few minutes with us. Go ahead, Gigi. Great. Um, just a couple of logistics about your uh, Zoom experience. You are all muted and your videos are off. 平常來講,你們不是做生的時候,請你靜音。You uh, can submit any questions or comments via the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your Zoom screen. 在下面有一個Q&A,就是問題與解答的一個地方,你可以留言,他們會幫忙來解答你們的問題。Please feel free to submit questions throughout the event. We will answer your questions live or in writing. Uh, or we will follow up after the event. As you may see on the screen, this event is being recorded. And uh, it only records the videos and audio of the speakers tonight, as well as anything we share on the screen. We would like to cover a few ground rules uh, for tonight. Uh, we ask that you do not assume we bring an open mind to this space. Uh, we would like to allow everyone to have a voice. So please again, submit your questions. We would like to allow everyone to have a voice. So please again, submit your questions. And we will be providing trigger warnings as needed and ask that you do as well when you submit your questions. 然后我们是有一些, 
呃，需要我们呃跟你们呃注引起你们注意的时间，我们会做这些动作的。Uh, and lastly, we ask that you be comfortable with discomfort. We finally Lastly, we will be having interpretation during tonight's session. Uh, 然后以下我会有这个传译的时间 To click uh, to access interpretation, you will need to click on the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen. 然后下面这个平面里头,你看到有这个中文传译的一个地方,你们可以按这个 interpretation的这个按钮。I'm going to stop sharing my screen to turn on the interpretation. Now, what's in Daito Kaishi Jaga Chuan Yida? Gigi, if you could briefly turn your video on to give me a thumbs up when you are in the channel. Okay. Are you all set, Gigi? Okay, great. All right, thank you so much for joining. And with that, I will pass over to Jen Amico Kaplan. Thank you so much, Sasha. If, um, yes, thank you for sharing your screen. So thank you everybody for joining us tonight for the premiere of Quincy from a distance. Um, we're very excited that you are here um, I am Jennifer Emiko Kaplan. I'm an economic development planner um, with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and the project manager for the Regional Immigrant Entrepreneur Storytelling Project. We know that there are many people here from different walks of life and different interests who have joined us tonight for the premiere of this film. Um, I want to make some special acknowledgements before we go into the screening of tonight's main event. The first is I want to acknowledge Representative Taki Chan, who has joined us tonight. Thank you for being here. I also want to acknowledge another very special guest who has joined us tonight, Lorraine Se, CEO of Sunshine Travel, and who was one of the small business owners interviewed as part of the film. Lorraine, we're very excited that you are here tonight. Thank you for joining us. And we hope that you can share some words and your thoughts after following the screening. Before we start, um, and you see this on the screen, I recognize that we need to address a difficult topic. It's regarding the increase in hate crimes against the Asian community that we have seen and many here attending have experienced firsthand in the past year. I want to share some thoughts from our agency. The last year has seen an increase in racist and xenophobic assumptions, behaviors, and attacks against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders who are wrongfully perceived as responsible for the COVID-19 outbreak. While it is easy and perhaps accurate to blame a portion of this increase on falsehoods spread by the former president and his administration, it is important to recognize that this misinformation is also deeply rooted in the historic leg historical legacy of racializing infectious diseases as an instrument of hatred against people of color. People who look to be of Chinese descent have been targeted and accused of being responsible for the COVID-19 outbreak this past year. But viruses do not originate from, nor are they spread by specific racial or ethnic groups and any such misconceptions should be strongly rebutted. We have seen the impact of this prejudice in our region through both reported and unreported hate crimes against individuals and the toll it has taken on the Asian business community. We also recognize 
that the Asian American and Pacific Islander community was in fact instrumental in limiting the spread of the virus by choosing to close businesses and adopt and promote social distancing in the use of personal protective equipment before such measures were required by the Commonwealth. If we could move over one slide, thanks. MAPC is committed to combating this fear and racism through education, advocacy, and ongoing collaborations with organizations that do important work in this field. Many of them have been our partners on this project and we are grateful. MAPC does not tolerate any harassment nor xenophobic behavior from staff, community partners, or any member of the community participating in events managed by or affiliated with the agency. That means this event today and any event moving forward. We have resources if you choose to educate and learn about the history of racializing infectious diseases and the impact that xenophobia has had on the Asian community. We also have links to organizations that we know are having active conversations about the subject to support the Asian community through this time. We realize you cannot click on these links here in this PowerPoint, but we are going to be sharing them as part of a follow-up to this event. Thank you. Sasha, could we stop sharing the screen? Thank you. I now like, would like to move into introductions about both our filmmaker and the project. The film that we are presenting today, Quincy from a Distance, is part of the Regional Immigrant Entrepreneur Storytelling Project. It's the first phase and it started in June 2020. The film was directed by Daphne Xu, our filmmaker and partner on this project, and we're excited that she's here with us today to do a Q&A following the screening. I'd like to give a brief introduction on Daphne. Daphne is a Chinese Canadian filmmaker who up until very recently was based out of Somerville, Massachusetts. She's joining us today from her hometown of Toronto, Canada. Daphne is an artist who explores the politics and poetics of place through film, video, photography, and printed matter. She also has a background in anthropology and city planning. Her practice engages observations of the everyday and effective experiences of contested landscapes. In addition to the work that you are about to view today, Daphne is working on a series of films in Shongan New Area, Hubei Province, a rural area becoming a megacity 100 kilometers south of Beijing. The first of these films, a Thousand Year Stage premiered at the Vision du Riel and Art of the Real at the Lincoln Center in 2020. She is also an active member of the Chinese American community here in the greater Boston area. And we came to know her through her work with the Chinatown Community Land Trust. Again, Daphne will be here to answer some questions that we have both prepared and also hoping to hear from the audience following the screening. Daphne, we're so excited to have had this opportunity to work with you on this project. Thank you. I'd like to introduce the project a little bit and give you some context before we dive into the film itself. You might be asking, why Quincy? Why did we start this project in Quincy? And the simple answer is that it actually had always started in Quincy. In 2019, the economic development team at MAPC started a small business plan with the city of Quincy. It was during this time that we started the outreach process that is usually part of a small business plan. It's going door to door, speaking with small business owners. And we were working with, the Quincy, with Quincy Asian Resources, a trusted partner in the Asian immigrant community in Quincy to help us with this effort. And we, with their help, we were able to speak with Asian small business owners in North Quincy and Wollaston. We heard two things during this time that I want to highlight today. The first 
was the incredible stories from small business owners who had established themselves as the cornerstones of their community. The second was that current municipal services being offered were not actively used, nor were they accessible. In early 2020, we started to wrap up this project and we're writing recommendations. And at this time, we were hearing misinformation about the coronavirus pandemic and the resulting xenophobia that was taking an alarming impact on the larger small Asian small business community. We knew that this impact could perhaps be made worse if Asian small business owners were not able to access these city services and state services that we knew they would need for relief from the pandemic and the impact it had on small businesses. So we had to ask ourselves, how could we bring attention to this issue? How could we encourage municipalities and states to lend to the recovery of Asian small businesses when the impact had started early on. And what we came back to were the stories that we had heard. So we partnered with the Arts and Culture Department at MAPC and Daphne to start this process. We wanted municipal government, state government, and all of you in this room to hear firsthand about the incredible strength of these small business owners in Quincy and what they mean to the community. So today you'll be hearing from three Asian small business owners in Quincy. You'll hear from Jim May, a photographer and owner of Jim's Hair Salon in North Quincy, which was established in 1990. You'll hear from Chris Yi, owner of Hungar Kung Fu and Lion Dance Academy who works hard to keep lion dance alive in the community. And you'll hear from Lorraine Say, CEO of Sunshine Travel, which is based out of Boston and Quincy, who has been a longtime leader in the travel industry. You'll step into the world of each small business owner. Everybody filmed their own footage with the direction and collaboration of Daphne. We felt this film was done almost entirely remotely. So yes, we do mean Quincy from a distance. And you'll hear from each small business owner what impact COVID had on their business, what support they still need. You'll hear about their resilience, what, how they have managed to pivot services and locations at times. And finally, you will hear what brought them to Quincy, why they love the community and why they call it home. At this point, I just want to remind everybody who has joined since the beginning that we do have interpretation services available in Mandarin and Cantonese. Gigi, you can see on the screen is in the interpretation channel, she's waving. And if you do need interpretation at this time, please raise your hand with the raise hand feature. You can see it at the bottom of your screen. And we're going to move in to the content of our film. I do want to give a content warning before we start that there is the description of a racially motivated attack during one of the interviews and stories shared in this film. And at this point, I will share my screen. And maybe I can get a thumbs up if people are seeing a YouTube video. Great. And I will start.
Hi. Yeah, this is my salon. So we have uh, six uh, stations uh, here. So now it's uh, only me to work. So this time. Yes. Oh yes. You can come in time, yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, fine. Intelligence. And so you have a Oh, so cosmetology, Cosmetologist, yeah. Um, so why do you choose this? Because I'm afraid that my language is not good. There are other things. Because you, you have to, this is to do with hands. Everyone needs to do hair. Right? That, that, and then there is also this thing. 呃，这种还有一种带有艺术性的东西，就是说你要是剪得好，跟人家还有这种东西，不是说是单纯的跟人家那个东西。所以我自己本人是搞摄影。嗯，我看到你微信了。啊，我我自己本来是本本来是搞摄影的，搞摄影的话，从这种艺术的观点的话，那还有一种就是嗯，属于一种艺术创作嘛。那你把它。这样想的话，你自己就觉得舒服一点，对不对？你要是你要不然的话，你你会厌倦嘛，对不对？每每个客人过来，比如说你今天你哎呀哎呀，师傅你你帮我设计一下我的头发，哎呦我很高兴，我说哎，按照你的话我你要这样说，哎呀不错，刚高兴，你高兴我也高兴。拍摄摄影的话，那个那那那最终的时间就已经很很远，因为我在中国大陆的时候，当时已经开始，已经是对摄影有兴趣。这个可能是有一点那个艺术有有遗遗传的那种关系的。我们家里面的人好像跟我有关系的那种 relationship 的话，好多人都喜欢摄影，都喜欢照相。那我呢，就是那下呢，就比较喜欢摄影。但是，但是你刚来八几年来的时候，呃，还没有地基头，那些那些胶片，还有一个就是为了生活嘛，你还要去工作嘛，你哪有那么多的时间去？你还要钱，还要印照片，还有，所以呢，当时就没有那么，没有那么多的时间去搞，搞这些摄影跟创作。那现在也因为随着。慢慢年纪也大了，然后呢就也清闲一些，嗯，所以呢就就时间就花了比较多一些，就
I try to come, you know, twice a week. That's why a lot of people say, oh, Kim, your, your hair nice. <laughs>我们知道不知道这个事情还会发生到什么时候对不对大家都有什么解决办法他会减租吗对不对我就申请COVID-19这段时间 connections in Quincy. I have a lot of friends, uh, my girlfriends from Quincy, and I um, just always really enjoyed the, the neighborhood in Quincy. Like, it's just um, always felt comfortable, and it's a large Asian demographic, which I thought would be good for the school. Um, but also, it's diverse, too. Like, this like this part of Quincy that we're in now is not majority, the majority is in Asians, like, either North Quincy or up in elsewhere, like, Walston. Like, here, it's like, very mix of cultures like next door we have a like african hair salon then here we have a brazilian butcher like <laughs> so it's just like and then over there there's like two chinese restaurants and a pizzeria and then so it's just very diverse so um you know and a lot of the students that you know there was a time when, when we were in lowell i was driving like three of the students from quincy to lowell and back so it just made sense to like come here and um you know, even though it's a little drive for me, I live in Newton, but still it's like, I feel like this is the best place to be. Um, 
based off of like demographics and rent and everything like that. Yeah. Five, two, three, body to right, body to left. In the beginning, it was a big scramble to find a place because one, we had to find the like. The, you know, Kung Fu schools need like a decent open space, right? And even though the one we have now isn't as like big as, you know, we hope it to be, it's still like, it, it needs to find something that works. By chance that uh, luckily, like one day I drove by here and I saw the like for rent sign on there. It was kind of hard in the beginning because, um, you know, the expectation is that, oh, we're in Quincy, it's a better neighborhood. So we're hoping that it would like flourish more, but definitely the first year was like really like um, uh, kind of emotionally difficult in the sense that like we weren't flourishing as much as we hoped we would. You know, some of the supports weren't there for us during that time. Um, so it was just, you know, that was tough. From the day, first day I came to Quincy, like I, I, I the school's there, that has been there forever. So, you know, it, it's hard to like set your, you know, build a strong foundation because also we're in a part of Quincy that, you know, some people don't even know about. It was a learning experience to know that like, yeah, you're in Quincy, but it also depends on like, where exactly are you in Quincy? The big loss was when performances wouldn't happen. So normally, like, you no, know, we just, um, so COVID just, like, all the shutdowns so that came right after Chinese New Year, which was we were lucky. And Chinese New Year is a big season for us to generate income. But we also generate income throughout the year. Like we have weddings, we have parades, and unfortunately, you know, all those things are canceled because of COVID. And so a lot of the income generated from that was lost. And like we don't charge our students very much. Some and a lot of times we give our students a break or discount. So it's really tough when we rely on that income, but now the income is stripped away. We have money stored up, right? But it's not like money flying out of the seams, you know. It's like you know, it's enough to get through the year. And so um, at this point, after COVID, I have really had to like analyze the situation and be like, well, what does the future look like? Will we have a Chinese New Year next year? Praise and weddings and things to really, the things that really keep our school alive based, you know, and our event isn't cheap. So I just, like, it's a balance of two. And I kind of made the analysis with some of the other instructors that it's not, Staying in this location would not be feasible um, or sustainable in this case. So we were looking to move to like a more affordable location. When everyone thinks of line dance, they have like memories. And a lot of kids, a lot of Chinese kids have memories of in Chinatown, Chinese New Year. And of course, you're going to see the line dance. Because that's the only time where you see it. All of Chinatown's blocked off, and you have like 10 teams together, all with flying heads and dancing all around the, the uh, all around Chinatown. So I think for a lot of people, like into the Boston community, like what it means to them is just like, uh, like a happy, a happy festive um, time and, and experience, right? Like normally when people see the line dance, like they might not know all the like integral, like what all the meanings are or anything, but for most people who are not scared of it, 
are like because some people get scared of like the lion head um that they're like um it's it just for them it's a symbol of joy and festivity and happiness <laughs> Line dancing is not as popular as it was, and it wasn't as big of an attraction as it was before. And so, and you know, in going to Chinatown, it's very hard to find parking, anyways. So it's like on a normal day. So you close off all the internal streets. You know, the parking is going to be very difficult. So people don't really want to come in for that. And it's during the winter for us, so you know, it's it's cold and. Um, so I don't know, but it's just definitely, definitely over the years. I feel like maybe there's not as much publicity about it too. I don't know exactly, but like I remember always seeing on the news that like, oh, the like, Chinese New Year is coming up this day, and everyone getting excited, and you see the streets jam packed full of people, and like, but it's definitely died off. Um, yeah, for sure. If you ask me why I like about Quincy, you should come and experience. Come, I'll show you around. Because of the COVID, because of the safety, because of the, the government for both the states, you cannot go interstate. The casino is in Connecticut. So, everything just stopped and then because of the safety issues and then nobody travel is travel bad you're not going to niagara falls even you want to go niagara falls nobody nobody want to sit in the 50 passenger bus no one want to go travel anywhere i won't i won't let my parents go and no travelers no one no one want to come from europe because of the flight no flights coming from europe no flights com coming from Singapore. No flights want to come from Malaysia. No flights from China <laughs> because of the, the visa issue. No students coming either. No students' parents coming either. Massachusetts is a college town. And a lot of the time, uh, the parents coming for the graduation, the t parents coming to take the kids going to school, and and now then because of all these difficult times and because of the pandemic because of the flight and it's very it makes it very expensive because of the safety issue people don't travel either so everybody just hold up with their plans and travel is a big hit it's a big biggest hit worse than the restaurant worse than the restaurant Sunshine Travel was founded in 1989 and the original location was located in 12 Tyler Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Sunshine Travel is the largest retail travel agency in New England. And since the COVID-19, our service is uh, supposed to cover the bus tours, air department and line runs to New York and North Carolina. Everything has to put to a pause. I'm now at Sunshine Travel Branch Office in Camden Market. We started our office in 2004. Um, the reason why we pick up Quincy is because Quincy is a popular city. Because of the pandemic and the open uh, only by appointment only, 
and uh, our team changed from a uh, travel agency become a grocery delivery office. This is our team. This is what we do every day now. They are very hardworking and then we never give up. I always ask for referrals, some friends referral to me and then they fill up the forms and then sometimes it's like a stretch. It, it, it's just that they ask you what is the plan, but for travel, it's not like restaurant, they can open, open small, small. But we, for travel, it really depends on the political climate. It really depends what is going to be released next month or what is next round. I don't know. Our, our life is really depends on what is going to happen to us. So I, I don't know what is the future. Maybe I, I, I work harder on the switching the career. I don't know. My staff asked me, I don't know, do go, go weight lifting. Maybe we can lift stronger, more vegetable or more, if we can deliver more boxes. <laughs> my, my staff complained that, uh, oh, my wrist is getting, I, I'm getting, see all my lines here, all my lines here, I, I, I can do more lifting. I, I lost like 10 pounds in the last two months. And my friends say, oh, it's good for you. <laughs> I say, okay, good. I'm a very optimistic person. Okay, that's good. This is our Rockland office built in 2008. Since the pandemic in March, everything has been put, put in the past. And um, I'll seek more than 20 buses and our employees more than 20 and some people and they're all out of work. And we're still working very hard to um, extend our employment and we're seeking all these opportunities to uh, waiting for our business to come back. What I like is, it's like a company speech is like, I'm the people, I, when I train my tour guide, we are the bridge between East and West. Yeah, you bring the people from overseas, but you bring our people to um, enjoy what we have and then we overseas because um, like the back then, the, gen uh, the generation always work very hard, very hard. They don't go out to sea. And we're the first bus company before Fonghua, before uh, Lucky Star, we're the first company to uh, bring the bus going to New York. We're the very first company because they only work in a restaurant or work in a, um, um, always work our older generation so I bring them hey you got to enjoy yourself go to New York to see what it is so I'm the first one to do the translation for the uh, tourism one Massachusetts office of tourism doing the translation for them back then it's no Google I do translation word by word myself doing the Chinese translation for them this is the famous of our uh, second president of the United States John Adams, and this is the Hancock Adams Street, newly renovated area. We find a very comfortable uh, uh, place for Tracy Valley residents. Here is the City Hall, it's all City Hall, New Hill, and this is the Queen City Station, Queen City Center Station. The Thomas Crane Public Library is noted for its architecture. It was funded by the Crane family as a memorial to Thomas Crane, a wealthy stone contractor who got its start in Quincy Quarries. The Thomas Crane Library has the second largest municipal collection in Massachusetts after the Boston Public Library. Are you ready to move to Quincy now? But I, I got to tell you one sad story. I've been abused by a, 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 a white lady in the Cameron Plaza. She pulled her pocketbook to me and then trying to beat me up, go back to China. This is some story, I'll tell you. This just happened the day before George Floyd died. Pulling this like this, go back to China.
U S O B. <laughs> Yelling at me. Before I feel very safe in Quincy because Quincy is is I, I grow up here. I always feel safe. And President Prasa is the workplace I, I have. I feel safe, but then nowadays, because of the term Chinese once the term Chinese virus come out, I don't mean to be like brought brought it up, but I always like the city, but because of this term, I, 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 I don't I don't like the discrimination word come out too often in in a state. This is the only year I, I feel not comfortable. Besides that, I, I, I love this country a lot. I'm an American citizen. I I love this country. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you for sticking with us after the video. My name is Claudia. I'm an arts and culture planner. I'm working along Jen Kaplan on this project and supporting Daphne, the artist, throughout this process. We will now start the Q&A section of the event. I have a couple of questions for Daphne and then we will open it up for the audience. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge Lorraine, uh, who we've just heard from in the video. Lorraine, if you would like to join and say a couple of words, raise your hand. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Lorraine. I got to see everyone. Thank you for Daphne to put everything together. And um, I am um, so happy to be involved in this video. And then this is difficult time. And then um, I'm so proud to be part of it. And I'm proud to be one of them. And um, I hope that, um, all the um, business owner can hang on and um, I'm still working. <laughs> and uh, I hope everybody can, uh, can um, put together something to help the business, so. This is what I can say for now. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. All right. Um, so Daphne, planner to planner, uh, we know that the planning field has historically ignored the needs of the Asian American community. What do you have to say about using your art to embolden Jim, Lorraine, and Chris to share their stories of resilience. Um, hi, everyone. First of all, I want to say thank you. Um, thank you to all the audience members for sticking around. And also, thank you to the MAPC team. Um, I think Jen and Claudia deserve way more credit on this film. Um, we kind of worked through this film um, every step of the way, starting from, I believe it was last May, when we first thought about making these videos. Um, as for the question about um, the use of art in planning to tell these stories, I think there's kind of the obvious answer of um, like Asians in America being very I guess, seen as invisible or not seen. And a lot of these stories aren't talked about. Um, and I guess the, the stories and you know art that deals with storytelling um, can uplift voices. I'm not sure I emboldened the business owners. I think we created a sort of platform um, where business owners could use their own cameras and share their stories and their worlds with us and a wider audience. Um, yeah, at the same time, I was a little bit um, conflicted because I think there's also an issue of storytelling um, being a means of 
kind of like attempting to humanize different populations. And I didn't want to be um, doing that with the business owners, as in trying to prove people's humanity. Um, so I feel like we attempted to go beyond that a little, but also try to keep it relevant to a planning audience. Thank you. For those that are not familiar with your work as an artist, you work to bring aware awareness to how government funding and large infrastructure disrupts lo local culture. As an outsider and a critic, perhaps, how was your experience working for MAPC, a government entity? Um, that's a good question. And I think I want to um, talk about different elements of our collaboration that I think um, attracted me to this project or that I thought about throughout the process. And one is kind of um, the idea of risk or creative freedom. I think for context, I usually work as an independent filmmaker, not necessarily on commission for corporations or state planning agencies. Um, and I think usually there's maybe more creative freedom, right, um, as an artist. But in a way, I feel like MAPC actually gave me a lot of room um, to, to play, <laughs> which was important to me. I remember Jen and I in conversations about these videos very early on. And when the idea was brought up to allow um, like business owners to provide the footage um, themselves because we wanted to be safe with social distancing, um, there was kind of this question of like, okay, so what's plan B or plan C, um, just in case, you know, business owners aren't willing to um, spend that time and catch, like, capture footage on their own. So there were a lot of, like, conversation, all these, um, like, like this uh, structure like just in case this can't happen, then what about this and this? And I kind of appreciated that kind of collaboration. Um, yeah, and I also really appreciate the, the transdisciplinary like nature of this. I feel like these videos are just kind of a start to a conversation that I hope we'll have here with audience members. And then also um, during the panel on the 17th with community organizations or amongst audience members. I don't have to be there. <laughs> um, so I think it's a start of a conversation. Um, and I think that it's also interesting seeing it in relation to the data. So I feel like planners, you know, are kind of um, taught to look kind of top down at places with maps and with quantitative data. But then this project maybe provides some more context about the local cultures um, and yeah, how people relate to the space. Thanks. Um, at this point, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to type them into the Q&A. Uh, in the meantime, I do have another question um, for any artist out there that is in the audience or will be watching this later. Do you have any advice to those that are seeking to work with MAPC or other public institution? Um, I guess it's related to what I just said about this collaboration. I think it worked out well because of our kind of constant communication. Um, yeah, I think that um, kind of discussing the goals of the project ahead of time and also your individual interests as an artist. Um, and then kind of understanding how to navigate between, they're almost like different languages, at least for me from, I went to planning school. Um, so I have an urban planning background, but I, I don't really see myself as a planner. Um, and so I think that what I learned in planning school was how, almost like how to talk to planners um, or learn vocabulary that planners use. Um, and I think this kind of like switching 
almost like code switching, I guess, between different disciplines, like your own as an artist, whether you're a filmmaker as well, or, you know, a sculptor, painter, or anything. Um, being able to translate between disciplines, I think is interesting to me at least, and is something that um, someone working in a state, um, in, in the context of being in residence at MAPC would have to deal with. I'd love to see comments too in the Q&A. I feel like it's a shame that this is in a uh, kind of more open chat format, but it was decided that we would do a webinar because of kind of fear of, of racist comments or attacks in the Zoom, which you wanted to avoid. But I'd love to see um, how people reacted or different of the film that maybe and I think we had no idea when we started like how long all of this would last yeah um at this point we will be stopping the simultaneous interpretation uh, and we will open it open it up for DG to yes. interpreter yeah. should I read the questions um, okay, so I see one from Carolina. What Carolina, are you, um, what are your artist superpowers and what are things or projects you are dreaming about? Um me. 觉得你做这个艺术工作者有什么的很强的能力? 然后以后你打算的最后的目标是怎么样? Um, thank you for that question. Uh, I would say for me, um, I don't know about superpowers, but I like <laughs> to, to uh, kind of, but I think that I like to channel my um, kind of curiosity and empathy. In 我觉得我的... 呃,好奇心跟我的同理心是主要动力 um, And projects I'm dreaming, I'm working on several projects right now A lot of them are kind of in um, um, editing stages 几个不同的项目，其中有一些我是在已经在校对的比较后期的的部分了。But um, something um, I loved about this project was it kind of reconcile helped me reconcile these two. Um, what I saw as two kind of opposing sides of me, like my planning background and then my um, kind of interest in in filmmaking and art. Now, 做这个项目对我来讲是有一个把我的两个极端的自我一方面是我对于这个比较有架构的计划另外一个就是我对于这个拍电影的一个比较艺术的软一点的性格都合拼起来是同一个人yeah, and a lot of the projects I work on are about um, contemporary China or um, the Chinese diaspora. And um, I think that I use filmmaking and art as ways of understanding um, the world around me. And yeah. Well, 我自己做的几个事情，有一些是关于现代的中国，特别是比较近代的中国，是比较呃现代化的。另外也有一些呃其他中国有关的事情。然后我我是比较呃了解自己。At this point, we have a couple of questions. 我们还有几个问题。I will group them um, together. There are a couple of questions about your process in convincing and working with the business owners about recording. Now, 
是有一些是需要录影的。Um, are you talking about Mark and Betsy's questions? Um, that's a um, really good question. Um, and I, um, as I mentioned before, Jen and I um, and Claudia too, we were all um, in conversation very early on. And we actually met the uh, business owners through um, different connections that we had, um, for example, through Quarry, Q-A-R-I, um, the now, Quincy Pius, Asian Research. Yeah, 譬如说 Jen 跟、uh, Betsy 跟我很早就讨论这些跟这个中小企业的老板讲话，然后我们很早的在这个 Quincy 这个的机构里头也也是有一些。At that point, there was some doubt about whether business owners would be willing to film footage themselves. And I think a big reason for that is because when people think of film, they think that it's something that's, you know, maybe more difficult or um, like, you know, or expensive even. Um, and I think that our idea was that you know, most people now have cell phones with phones. And so, um, the business owners might be popular now too. 然后我们的中小企业的老板，我们开始很担忧，他们是不愿意自己拍些一些片段，因为担忧他们觉得这个拍些没有经验，也很贵，很难。但是后来我们也跟他们讲了，我们可以用手机啊，用什么其他的简单的方法来拍，出来的效果其实也差不多，所以他们也很合作，也愿意做了。When when we started、um, the interviews with the business owners, we had we didn't necessarily confirm. I think Lorraine was actually unwilling to participate in the Uh, um, like capturing footage herself at first, but maybe she just didn't have enough information. And after the interview, we discussed the idea of her、um, kind of being a tour guide and showing Quincy. And then、um, it just continued from there. Ah, 后来哪一个旅行社的老板 Lorraine， 他开始的时候也是不是很知道到底拍什么。呃，应该怎么样做？所以也是好像有一些不愿意的状况。后来我们一下的跟他面试一下，大家谈嗯讲讲的沟通了之后，他特别是很愿意做，因为他做的工作是旅行社，也是介绍呃民生啊这些地方啊什么的，所以他其实做出来是非常自然，做得非常好。I think the next two questions are kind of related. 下面两个呃、uh, 问题是有关联的。One speak to who the audience was for this work. 那其中一个谁是我们的目标的观众 ？And the other is about a municipality using videos without. Without trying to manipulate the public. Um. Then, 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 They mean by manipulate the public, exactly. 可以不可以再解释一下什么是比较控制这些观众的呃反应？问这个问题的人出来了。你们好。Um, can you hear me?、Mm -hmm. 你听到我吗？ Great. 听到。Um, yeah, I think I mean like for a city government. Can using particular voices、um, or pushing an agenda. 
譬如说，这个政府的部分的机构、政府的部门，他们会不会用强势的来控制我们的言论？就是要，呃，他们想我们听到的，他才让我们讲出来，会不会有这个事情呢？ And so I'm I'm curious on how a city government, and I know that this was MATC, not not the city of Quincy necessarily, like how we could actually work with artists to kind of present the stories as they are,、um, without trying to push an agenda. 然后我们可以不可以整个城小城市？女头的人有一些工作者，譬如说是艺术工作者，要拍这些影片，可以不可以？他们就是拍正常的情况是怎么样就怎么样，不会有令到有政府的压力给他们改变他们的故事。Um. Okay. So you mean in terms of like the the way it's shown, almost like is it trying to be? Like, is it like branding for a city government or a municipality? Is that what you mean? Like, yeah, if you yeah exactly. You 是不是问这个嗯、um, 政府的方面会不会是有给一些压力，要塑造他们的呃造型是应该是怎么样？然后希望公关方面就是呃比较一个正面的呃有面子的一方面，才让别别人知道见到会不会呢？ I think that's a really good question, and I think that bringing an artist, like a kind of third party, in. 然后我们如果用一些呃美术工作者，就是第三者的比较是客观的人进来是呃帮助我们比较公正客观一点。I don't well. I don't know about Kogwan, which means objective. I don't know if artists are more objective. I think that artists are still very subjective. But I think, for example, in my interview with、um, with the business owners, I feel it was one on one on Zoom,、um, and I feel like I encouraged them to say what they actually thought about the level of state support or city government support for them at this time,、um, and that you know. I'm not really a representative of the city government or of MAPC. I mean, I was working with MAPC, but I didn't really see myself as a representative of MAPC. I think there was like a little bit of maybe confusion, like、um, them asking me for like, you know, so what are all of the resources that we can use right now? And I actually did not have all of that knowledge. During the interview, so I'm, and then I had to be like, you know, so you can contact Jen and Claudia, and they'll connect you. But、um, no, that's a really good question. I think it also has to do with like、um, how the film is is promoted, right? Like in how it's I, framed.、Mm -hmm. Yeah,、um, Daphne, I lost the whole long conversation. Can you bring up a few key points shorter? Um, at points one at a time.、Um, the artist is not necessarily a representative of the state.、Uh, 对，我们的美术工作者不是代表这个政府的呃他们的意见。Um, and then it's important how the storytelling or filmmaking or art is is framed and promoted. Um, and the artist has some agency in that, I think. 然后做好的这些影片之后，怎么样来跟什么观众来呃展示这些？怎么样推广这些也是一个因素。And then I think that's related to Lily's question about who I saw as the key audience. 然后我们也看一下我们的观众目标的观众是谁。I think that. Um, that's also a really good question, and I kind of alluded to this in my first answer to Claudia's question about how I did not want to be like just trying to make business owners seem like human beings for planners who like don't know about、um, like how Asian business owners live or don't really even acknowledge or notice the struggles of Asian communities. 
，然后我也希望，呃，就是我是一个艺术工作者，然后我对于这个小企业的老板，他们的营业，他们的企业，然后他们有一些挑战，就是比如说收入比较低的时候，呃。呃，没有人光顾啊，等等的时间是怎么样应付？然后，呃，我做这个艺术工作者也希望是表达他们的状况，比较公正一点。But this is very challenging in this context while working with NAPC because from the very beginning it was framed in terms of like、um, questions that Jen, Claudia, and I、um, came up with.、Um, That would be of interest to these planners who don't, who kind of neglect these communities. 然后对于这个整体的呃、um, 社会，对于这些小的压抑的企业，有时候他们也好像当如看不见的样子。所以我开始跟 Jane 跟 Claudia 一块工作的时候，就是 M A P C 工作的时候，也有提出这个的一个挑战。Um, and in terms of countering the white gaze in general, <laughs> I don't know if I、um, I do think about that question a lot, but I feel like、um, thinking about it too much will end up just kind of restricting my、um, kind of artistic freedom or way of being. Even I mean, you can say that about a lot of work、um, that's about. China, for example, or about Chinese diaspora communities, but um,、oh, you can. Um, 我开始工作也是做这些关于现代中国的情况，然后我跟这些呃社区里头的亚裔人的中国人，嗯、呃，也是他们的企业，嗯、呃。But in a way. In a way, if that's your, if that's a huge concern when you're making work、um, as a non-white artist, I think you're already like in a sort of trap. Then I am Asian, I am Chinese, and then I am doing artistic work. If I want to make this work, uh, uh, artistic work, to make out of the public eye, people who are looking at me are already a trap. And in terms of this film. Um, and also the other work that I do, I feel like I、um, kind of encounter the、um, the business owners like where they were at that time, and then、um, you know they gave me their footage, and it wasn't like necessarily directed in a certain way to in order to prove something. It was just based off of our、um, like you know conversation. Now what? 让受到他们的拍影的一些片段，其实没有一些故意刻画一个故事出来，就是随便他们怎么样拍。然后有时候，呃，呃，就是比较自然一点。嗯。Yeah, I now see a couple of questions about how we chose to interview these three individual business owners. 我们的有一个问题就是问我们怎么样选择这三个被访问的人，就是这些企业的老板。这三个你们怎么样选出来的呢 ？Jen, do you want to take this question? Jen, 你喜欢问这个问题吗？回答这个问题吗 ？Take a break. I am happy to. 我很高兴回答这个问题。So when we started thinking about doing filmed interviews, 我们是决定要用这个拍影这个影片来访问。We engaged in some conversations with the community-based organizations that we knew were active in Quincy, like Quincy Asian Resources. 然后我们就是在这个嗯呃,呃有一些机构是在这个昆西昆西的地方是比较活跃的，有影响力的机构。Yep, and we were also speaking to Boston Chinatown Neighborhood Center and. 我特别也有跟这个唐人街呃租借的一个机构。
Asian Community Development Center. And finally, Chinatown Main Streets. Um, these were all partners that we had on this project. And from the very beginning, as we sort of started to scope out as we in planner talk. <laughs> we discussed, yeah. mm -hmm. um, we discussed parts of this project and tried to understand what was the best choice. 然后他们也觉得这跟这些合作伙伴来讨论一下，他也他们也觉得这几个被访问的人很恰当。We were thinking about industries that had been impacted. 就是关于不同的行业是受到影响的。We were thinking about demographics such as age. 然后也对于这个年龄的有一些年纪大一点、年纪轻一点的 And that was really related to thinking about business owners who had been long established in the community versus people perhaps were new to the community like Chris in our film. 然后有一些是比较在这个地方已经开业很多年的,也有一些比较新一点的。so after those discussions and careful consideration, um, we decided to interview the three business owners that you saw today. That being said, um, I guess it's okay to preview a little bit that we do want to have future phases of this work. This project is in no way done. I think Daphne said it well when that it was an invitation to start a conversation. So we are actively thinking about what other types of business owners we should be interviewing, and perhaps that may include a restaurant owner, as noted in the Q and A. 然后就譬如说，我们刚刚开始这个短片有三个呃企业，然后有一些在 Q and A 这个问题解答里头提出来，就是说我们可以呃问一下一些餐馆的，所以我们打算是再继续的访问下去。so sorry for the long answer, and I'll turn it back to <laughs> Daphne and Claudia. Yeah, how我的问我的回答有一点长，然后现在请Daphne跟Claudia可以继续这个环节。Thank you. 嗯，谢谢。Daphne, can you tell us about your experience experience during this process? Um, Lily wants to know if if it if you grew as a as an artist, if if this changed you, if this was a challenge. Daphne,现在有一个呃观众就问一下，你做这个影片的拍摄的过程，有没有感觉你是成长当中是有一些呃认识自己更多啊，还是怎么样的，有什么改变呢？ I think my internet is a little spotty. Can you hear me? Well, ting down. Yeah, okay. Um, so I first I want to talk about or just comment on Lily's first comment about um, like how Lorraine says at the end, you know, but I'm American. Um, I, I think that that moment for me I think you know Lauren and I went of our interview on Cannon Plaza um and it was very emotional um and um I think that line of just like I but I'm American and I love this country it just speaks to the stereotype like of Asians being perpetual foreigners in America and this like feeling of a need to prove um that we're not 
呃，在拍摄这个过程之中，最后这个旅行社的呃呃老板。他 Lorraine， 他特别在结尾的地方，他说我是，呃，亚裔的美国人，我是这个国家的公民，我爱这个国家。这个对 d a p h n e 来讲是有一个影响，因为呢，嗯、呃，很多亚裔美美国人。都给别人觉得是不是很重要？有一些甚至是觉得你永远是外国人，永远你你是没有是主流社会的这个美国人的圈子里头的一份子。所以这个对我来讲是很有回响。嗯、um, ，and in terms of how I grew through this process, I think it made me reflect a lot about the importance of kind of small business owners. I mean, that sounds a little Obvious, but、um, for I guess personally, for me, you know, my parents are small business owners in Toronto, and I grew up in、um, very similar kind of Asian or Chinese specifically enclaves.、Um, 然后我是长大的环境是在多伦多里头，我爸妈是拥有一个小企业的，然后我在美呃加拿大长大。And it was. Um, amazing to learn about, you know, like Jim's been in his studio for、uh, Jim's hair studio for I think like twenty something years. Is it more? Then the first Li Fa's, this is also a photographer, artist. He met Jim. He opened this salon for twenty years. 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 Plays that type of role in this community, but then Chris, he's so like responsible to all the kids who are involved at Hungar, and that's like one of his main motivations in in、um, in continuing with Hungar, even like despite these difficulties. Now, 然后这个呃、uh, ，Jim 他是做这个发型师的。他在这里二十年，很多的顾客跟他们的儿女都回来跟他，就是在哪里理发了。然后他一直那么多年在对这个社区是很有影响的。然后他也很注意他们家，他工作需要喂饱他的家庭呢。但是他也很注意其他的小孩在这个社区里头是有饥饿的情况，所以他也在做起。Seems like we've lost Gigi.、Um, well, thank you, everyone.、Um, thank you for staying this late on a school night.、Um, we thank Daphne for joining us, Gigi for helping us get through this. If you can hear us. Um, now I will hand it over to Jen. Thanks, Claudia, and hopefully we get Gigi back. I apologize to those who are using interpretation services. We are having some internet issues.、Um, Claudia already did a lot of the thanking for me, but I did just want to again give a huge thank you to Daphne, who has been such a wonderful partner on this project. And Gigi's back. Yes. No worries, Gigi. We just we were just starting.、Um, so I was just saying,、um, thank you to Daphne for working with、oh. us on this project. Oh, you're welcome.、Um, and a huge thank you to Gigi for providing interpretation. <laughs> uh, 谢谢，我是应该的做的。I want to give a huge thank you, and probably not even enough thank yous to Jim, Chris, and Lorraine. 嗯哼，谢谢，嗯，其他的成员都帮助这个呃项目能够做成。
Thank you for sharing your stories. Mm -hmm. I also want to give a huge thank you to our, proje our project partners on the Regional Immigrant Entrepreneur Storytelling Project. And those are Asian Community Development Corporation, Boston Chinatown Neighborhood Center. And Chinatown Main Streets and Quincy Asian Resources. They are leaders in their work. And the ones who have been on the ground providing services to Asian small business owners not only during the pandemic, but before. Like our work with Daphne, we have been learning a lot from them. And and we have been fortunate to have the opportunity to work with them on this project. We also want to thank the Bar Foundation who have helped fund this project. And I, actually, and I want to thank the city of Quincy. Who have continued to be supportive of our efforts working within the city and the Asian community. And certainly, last but not least, I want to thank the entire MAPC team. And the leadership who have joined us today. Um, and at this point, Sasha, could we pull up the last few slide decks, please? I think we still have a few people we can speak with in the audience. Sasha, you can You can hear more from our partners at the second event for this project on March 17th. And Daphne will be joining us again as well as we reflect on the past year. And what municipal and state governments can do to support Asian small business owners as the, amidst the ongoing crisis. And finally, I mentioned this before in an answer to one of our questions. We as an agency are committed to continuing this work of elevating the voices of Asian immigrant small business owners within our region. Now, we are defining the scope for phase two of this project. And that includes identifying a part of the region to continue this work and partners and artists to work with. 
，然后我们也可以呃，就是了解在这里有什么的机构是可以我们去呃，商量是可以做一个合作伙伙伴的。If you have ideas, please reach out to me. 如果你有一些呃好的意见，也希望你呃跟我们联系，让我们可以呃想想可以呃用出来。And I will be putting my email somehow. I'm not sure how yet in the Q and A box. 然后我希望把我的呃电子邮件也写出来，大家可以参考，可以拿去再写邮件给我。So that is the end of today. 那今天的节目就差不多也结束了。Thank you, Daphne. Thank you. 谢谢 Daphne. 谢谢。Thank you, all of our partners. 谢谢所有的派单 And we will be now ending this event. 啊哈，谢谢 Thanks, everyone. 谢谢，拜拜 Thank you, everyone.